If you don't believe in conspiracy, then you shouldn't be looking at the Underground Railroad. The New World Order Auction and Negro Sales $40 40 years of Negro men Tuskegee syphilis experiment Moon posting a flag and playing golf There are three truths, the dreadful bitter truth, your truth, and the Clifton Bradley Underground Railroad's truth. We as the media, mission, and duty is to make you aware of what's happening in our city, community. All aboard, all aboard, come on up Clifton, and beat, beat the drums. Hello, and welcome to In the Mind of Minister Ben Willis. I am your host, Benjamin. And to my right, I have. And we also have today. My name is Minister Ben Willis. I am the National Representative of the Flaming Crescent Society. The Flaming Crescent Society is an organization that uplifts and educates our people. And I'm also a part of uh, the mentorship program at North Lawndale High School. I've been doing that for three years, and this is my fourth year doing that. And we help the, senior pro we help the seniors graduating uh, to look forward to what they got to do after they leave high school. Okay. All right. And uh, I guess today we're going to go ahead and ask you, gentlemen, a few questions. Uh, this is something that I've had on my mind also. Uh, first off, I would like to open up with, as far as the gay community, uh, complaining about the struggle with black struggle and comparing the two, uh, what are your views on that, either of you? Well, um, that's interesting. I've heard that also, that the LGBT community uh, is aligning themselves up with with the struggles of black black people and their plight and I sojourn here in the United States of America with slavery being what it is and uh, what's going on today about black young black men women and children getting slain in the streets let's just look at this slavery was to the black people the black people struggle in the United States of America under slavery was the worst thing that could happen to any human being in the history of mankind. Just imagine you're getting beat, killed, dismembered. Now you see we're talking about the immigrations and things like that when they're taking the children from the immigrants and putting them in cages. Well that was a common practice during the time of slavery. In fact when the slave, uh, when the woman had her baby they would take that baby right away from her and then chop them up and feed them to alligators. Now, comparing the struggles, homosexuality and slavery, you get hung, you get beaten, you get sexually raped, and you want to you want to compare that to two men wanting to suck each other's you're going to compare that? No women, pregnant slave women being hung and then having a baseball bat to beat the baby out of their stomach and the baby crashes down on concrete. You want to compare that? Your struggle because you got your bedside manner, you want to compare that because that's what you do in the bedroom? You want to compare that to slavery? Just imagine. You in the house, the slave family's in the house, and some nasty, sweaty, stinking slave master get your wife and take her and rape her with other ones and then bring her back. What does that do to the father and to the children when they see something like that and to her? And then they come back and then they get your daughter and do the same thing to her. 
What does that do to the children of fabric of a slave family? Then after that, they go get the father. Do you know that they would take the father in front of his family and pull his pants down and sexually rape him in front of his family? This is supposed to be the head of the family. They do that to him. You know, when these young guys you see out here with their pants sagging down, that's where that came from. It's called buck breaking because they call during the time of slavery, they call women winches and the males bucks. And they would pull his pants down and sexually rape him in front of his family. And then he has to walk around with his pants hanging down because that's the sign to the other slave masters that he's been broken. And these young guys don't even know why they even do it, doing that. In fact, in some fraternity rituals, these guys are, uh, uh, some of them are walking with their pants down and jumping around amongst each other. You can go do the research. And this kind of atrocity is happening to people, and you want to align because you want to lay down on a woman? Another woman want to lay down on a woman? And a man want, listen, you can be gay and do everything you want to, but now when you cross the line of trying to align yourself up with black people's sojourn here, then I have a problem with it. Now, a lot of people is not going to talk about it because they want to be politically correct. They want to be homophobic or anything like that. And I'm not homophobic. But damn it, you ain't going to compare nothing to what we've gone through and still going through right now. And I tell from the transgenders and other black male homosexuals and female homosexuals, they will whoop your ass and kill you. It ain't got nothing to do with you being gay. It's got to be with you being black. Oh, man, don't, don't start me. Don't start me on true. this here. Uh, I got to say, I do agree with what you said there, Minister Benjamin. I mean, um, the comparison, I honestly, in my opinion, I can't still see how you can compare a way of like, well, your sexual prowess to, you know, pretty much, well, we didn't die off because we're still here, obviously, but I don't see how you compare a struggle, our struggle with something that you choose to do willingly and say that you were born the way I was born black, you chose to be this way. So I really don't have anything, you know, to add. Well, you pretty much said everything on that note. Do you want to add anything, Brenda? But also, you can see that a lot of people are becoming, making this a uh, open type of situation, being gay. And you just see it, they got, we got prides now, stuff like that. You, n you would never see something like that in the 80s, 90s, possibly not even in the early 2000s. But this is just a uh, new generation doing new things that they don't know what they're getting themselves into wow. along or down the mm. And well, directly from the mouths of babes there. Yes, yeah. yeah. Understood, understood. Uh, I don't want to sp uh, spend too much time on one subject. I have many more. Uh, I think this would be something that uh, most of the younger generation could probably answer or identify with. Uh, do you think video games probably promote violence or you know certain type of music such as drill music, which is Chicago is very known for, and it's just in the city of Chicago, drill music. Uh, do you think that probably influences violent behavior amongst uh, probably teenagers or the younger from age like 12 to like 19, 20? Either. See, see on, that, on that standpoint, I can see the violent video games. We got Call of Duty, live sh army sh shooter game that's mm -hmm. really not for a teenager or a, not, not not really a teenager but a younger child I've, I've seen eight-year-olds seven-year-olds possibly five playing this game and i'm like do they understand mm -hmm. what these soldiers and everything go through this is not for play and then they go out and try it for real so it's like nothing really to, it's just watch your kids sure. watch what you Watch what you put in front of them. Okay, understood, understood. Uh, I want to kind of back off of, off of what he said, and it's going to be, I mean, I'm just going to make a lateral move on that. Um, that music part, it does um, influence people. But also, you know, but also I look at, um, you'd be surprised who would influence. I met, I, I, I spoke with this young lady. I spoke with this young lady, a very classy young lady, and, and we was talking about music. And I asked her about different artists and things like that. And she said, and we were talking about it, and I said, you know, you, we, we, and we, we just going back and forth. I said, you like Anita Baker? She said, yes. 
Anita Baker's all right. And I say, what about Whitney Houston? She said, yeah, because she seemed like that type of person, a Whitney Houston and Anita Baker type. I said, what about Natalie Cole? She said, yes. But she said, but you know who I like? I said, who? She said, I like Cardi B. And I'm like, wow. She said, you know why? Because Cardi B is ratchet. And I like ratchet. You know, she said, I like ratchet. So I was like, oh, OK. So <laughs> so the influence, it could be and it don't matter what age you are, True. True. you know. OK, interesting. Um, uh, the young brother Brendan had made a uh, comment about a bit Call of Duty. Now I really don't play the games like that, but I just want to know: is that the one where it's from a first-person point of view, where you actually see the hand and the gun, or something like that? It's like a character running around. The uh, it's a uh, first-person shooter, so it's simulating a actual war zone of a fight that okay. some people cannot handle, and they tend to make it an action and make it something that's not real into something that's real okay so you can actually see the hand like with the gun or stuff and it actually yes. simulates taking a life okay all right all right well uh, i would like to add my two cents on that i mean when i was younger i mean we didn't have like the call of duty we did have the mortal combats the street fighters which i i love playing uh even to this day as a grown man you still may catch me playing a new mortal Kombat game you know but um i remember once upon a time that that game you know it had a lot of press because of the quote the fatalities of what they were called killing mm -hmm. your opponent once you're done fighting them and that's that game actually started the rating for video games you know mm -hmm. with image for mature and all those other ratings right. so um I was younger, and yes, a lot of uh, we were in seventh grade, and some of us were imitating the Scorpion, get over here, you know, doing that, or the Ryu, you know, trying to do the Street Fighter stuff. So I could say that it uh, does influence uh, younger individuals, but that's where you have to know the difference between, you know, fiction and reality. You know, if you watch The Terminator growing up, you know you can't go into a, a movie theater or a mall with an AR-15 and air everybody out. Unfortunately, that does happen sometimes in certain movie theaters, um, you know, which happened like what around the Dark Knight movie came out that actually happened. Um, and it's amazing the ones that actually do that actually take those those actions. You know, it's a shame that their punishment isn't as severe as it should be. So I'll just put that out there. Um, moving on uh, before I get heated and stop talking about that too much. Um, I want to uh, bring up something also as far as, uh, since we're speaking on violence, uh, I wanted to speak about the black community and as far as the violence in the black community, especially in the city of Chicago. Uh, I love the city, as you can see, it's uh, where I'm from and been here I'm thir all 38 years of my life. So, I mean, I've loved the city since then. Uh, but it's always had, Chicago's always had like a dark cloud over it when it came to media or press. Blues Brothers, and that was one thing to look at that people liked, uh, Running Scared uh, with Billy Crystal, uh, you know, certain movies like that. But nowadays it's like this Chirac thing that just, it irritates my soul to hear somebody say, you from Chirac or Chirac. I mean, no, this is Chicago. It's more than just what the media is perpetuating of just a bloodbath, but it does happen. So, I mean, just picking you gentlemen's brains, what do you think would be a good I don't know, like some sort of something can solve that or remedy of some sort. Well, for, first off, Chicago is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Uh, one of the most vacation spots in the world. They're, and they're not the they don't lead uh, the United States in murder. They're not even in the top 10. So that let's get that out the way. Uh, there is only five zip codes in the city of Chicago that where there's violence at. That's you know, just five zip codes. That's it. Fine. Let out, do the research. Okay. okay uh, so when we look at that, sure, and them, and them zip codes, people, in fact, right now, as we speak, there's going to probably be about 2 million people that will be down in the city of Chicago and downtown area for Lollapalooza. They're not going to have that in a, 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 a gangster town. First off, what we got to do, we got to get out of this ghetto mentality where you, all you focus on is foolishness those are the minorities to the majority of black people in the city of chicago they are law providing they take care of their children the children go to school I, I live right down the street from a university called chicago state and every june there's young black men and women walking across that stage with master degrees doing it and running corporations put the camera on that let me show you something else 
right here as I'm sitting down here talking. There's three generations up here. Three generations. Me and this young man are on both ends of the spectrum. And you're the middle. You're like the bridge. And we're sitting here talking about things. And from different eras. But we're talking about it in our own way. So I'm proud to be here. Okay. Understood. I can congratulate you. Anything you want to add to that, Brendan? It's a lot to take in on that part. But what I'm going to add in is that the only one possible reason I can see that they don't show many of a, a many black African Americans down here or anywhere showing their successes because basically they belittle, like almost belittle, belittle mm -hmm. everything about us. That's right. Okay, uh, I have another question I would like to ask. Another uh, question that has been, uh, I guess, plaguing the uh, city of Chicago and many other cities. Um, as far as violence in the black communities, I mean. There's always been like a, a gray cloud or a black cloud over the city of Chicago as far as violence, uh, gang related activities or anything, even back to the mobster days and things of that nature. I really just wanted to, you know, pick you gentlemen's brains about, you know, this whole violence in the black community, especially in the city, the whole Chirac thing, I guess I'm getting, which really irks my soul. But what do you all think about that? The whole uh, gang violence in Chicago and what actually could be done as a remedy for it opposed to just, you know, oh, well, let's blame this person or blame this group. What can actually be done about it to rectify it? Education. Okay. Education. Educated, educated, educated people don't shoot guns. They don't do that. Okay. You know, uh, no one's going out there doing that. But not to uh, cut you off, but you, but you know, it's higher ups that uh, that's basically in that sense doing that. What you mean by that? What I can say is many of the great leaders supposedly that's surrounding us and that's supposed to be our, our leaders for everything and dealing with the government and like that. We have had so many great leaders assassinated out of the blue and nobody said nothing about it. And you already know most definitely it.